on healthy grass, uh, because we don't know where these nematodes uh, uh, tend to occur, because they're going to be unevenly distributed in clumps, we don't know where those clumps are. So what you're going to do is you're going to go across the area, the green or the fairway or tee, in more of a zigzag pattern and taking samples as you're going along in this zigzag, so we're getting an average nematode population density across the areas. When we're sampling grass, it's already showing symptoms like this, okay, uh, where the grass is now looking bad, we want to see what's going on with it. So taking in one spot, we really don't get a good idea of what's happening. So what we recommend is taking multiple cores around the area. Now when you've got grass that's really looking bad, you want to avoid spots where the grass is dead. Like you see over there, that big dead spot, okay, we wouldn't want to take a nematode sample there because there's no grass, so nematode population is going to be low because these nematodes have to feed on live turf. Okay, so we want to stay away from the really bad spots. I try to concentrate on areas where the grass was sick, but where it wasn't dead. Okay, now another thing that's important is, uh, you notice I took samples about this deep. So generally three to four inches deep is where you want to go with a, a typical nematode sample. Uh, if you've got, sometimes on greens, you may be closer to three, then on fairways and tees, closer to four. But in that range, it's going to get where most of those, those nematodes are. Now, once we, we uh, uh, get our sample, uh, the next important thing is to uh, put it in a bag. Now, I highly advise that you use plastic bags and not paper bags or soil test bags. We want to keep them in a plastic bag so to keep it from drying out. Uh, generally, we want you to take uh, cores from about 16 spots around, uh, around the area if you're sampling a fairway or a tee or a green, about 16 cores, three to four inches deep from around that area. We take our bag, we seal it up, and uh, it's ready to go. Now, uh, you can use uh, Ziploc bags, we get samples in bread bags, all kinds of bags. And the important thing is, you, is it's a plastic bag that you can seal up so it's not gonna dry out. We take our sample and uh, you wanna get it into, out of the sun as soon as possible and uh, then keep it in an air conditioned room until you can send it off to a lab. I advise you send it out, uh, you know, generally the next day is gonna be your best uh, bet. The longer these samples are in transit, uh, the generally the lower the recovery gets. So get it out of the sun, uh, carry a cooler with you, throw it into, you don't have to keep it on ice or anything, but just to keep it from getting too hot. And then uh, keep it in an air-conditioned room until you send it off to a lab.